I've mentioned several times that I'm really looking forward to the development of the narrative in the lore of Isle It because it seems more consistent with what I like. I like dark fantasy, thriller, <laughs> anything, any narrative or story where there's a very thin line between the good and the evil, where it's confusing which one's good and which one's bad. And it seems like so far, the cinematography and the story that Isle It has been telling is a little consistent with that. And it is very different from all the other narratives that has the the, the narratives and the messages that have been developed in K-pop so far. Um, so let's get to that we will look at how things this is more like an analysis some conclusions and a little bit of theory as to where the story is going based on their brand film the teasers and of course the music video of cherish my love if you ended up liking this video please give it a like subscribe and hit that notification button and of course share the video if you can all right on to my observations analysis and some theories the coexistence of dream and reality. That's one of the things that make Isle It unique. They, in this is going to be the first narrative or lore under Hybe where both the real personalities of the artist and the made up characters will be featured. They're going to coexist. Other groups under Hybe just created a different character altogether, but they are different. In, in the sense that they are actually introducing a portion of the personalities of the artist, a little bit of Yuna, a little bit of the real Wani, the real Minju, Moka, Iroha. And then we're also starting to see glimpses of this alternative world that they will be in later through their dreams. So from the very beginning, we see them in this fantastical situations, a, a large poppy, you know, there's all this dreamlike situations that they are being put in that, of course, it's not, it, it's not realistic. That's why it's dreamlike. But then we also, in many of the sequences, we'll, we see just them. Like, they are students, ordinary students. They're just friends having fun. And so I think those two worlds are different, but they coexist and they, and they exist at the same time. So I think that's where they are going. The, re the real world and the dream world will coexist and their characters are just going to go back and forth. In the brand film, we see five approaches to dreams. The different relationships of each of the members to their dream world. In each of the dream world, however, we see dark elements peeking through in the entirety of the video okay but first let's go to yuna um, it's also important for us to remember their superpowers in the first brand film but here for her it's buried and forgotten dreams she said in the brand film that whatever she dreams of she actually forgets but it also revitalizes her in that she wants to take a warm bath and then she wants to eat something sweet and then she's off again like she's happy so whatever it is that she is experiencing in her dreams it's giving her a chance to be better or to be in a better mood in her real world i think there's also a certain connection to her superpower in the first brand film i think she has if i remember it correctly she has super strength so I think the power that she is experiencing in her dream world can be carried through her reality. Okay, that's for Yuna. Now for Wani, for her, it's freedom, but it could also be escape. In her consciousness, she said that the dream is providing her the freedom. But it also seems, because of the things that she's saying, it seems that it can also be an escape. It's um, There's a thin line anyway between the two. But she there's a certain displacement from the present from what is normal she wanted um she wanted to fly she wanted uh, an eagle she wanted to go to mars and then she was talking about toes and that she practiced moving her toes so there's like something off about her so there it the dream could be that it isn't just a freedom but also an escape from what she is experiencing in her reality Okay, that's for Wani. And then for Minju, it's very interesting to me because she said that she has sleep paralysis. She was experiencing it. So it's it's scary, 
but then it also brings her happiness and excitement. So I think the dark element or the dark side of herself that she is going to experience in the dream world is something that she is more comfortable with than her normal, normal self in the real world. For Ayroha, she said that it's all about confronting herself. So the dream is her chance to make herself better. That whatever she can't do or change about herself or improve ab about herself in her real world, she get a chance to do it in her dream world. And then for Mocha, it's all about lightness and carelessness. Everything that she can't do because of the responsibilities maybe in her real world, world, she is able to do in her dream world. Okay, so it is going to be very interesting how their superpowers that we saw in the brand film is going to play in this lore. It could either be their superpower can be experienced. Maybe it's in the real world. Maybe it's in the dream world. Or maybe it crosses over. I remember one, he can control light. And then Mocha, I think, is she can freeze time. And then Iroha can move objects. So at this stage, I'm not, I forget, I don't remember what it is with um, the superpower of Minju. But at this stage, I'm not sure if those superpowers will be in the dream world or it's going to be in the reality or is it going to cross over. It could be that sometimes they'll use it in the dream world and then they'll feel the effects in the present world, in their re in the reality, the world that they are actually in. Okay, now that's for the brand film. And then let's go into, let's see how that's going to tie up into the concept films. Before we go to the concept film, uh, in the brand film, they also established and described their real personalities. And I think that's going to be interesting in how the real personalities will play their role in the dream world. For example, Yuna is supposed to be childlike. Mocha is very calm and quiet, but also very funny. Minju is very calm, but also very quirky. And Wani is cheerful. She's puppy-like. And then they describe Iroha to be... A professional and a perfectionist as if you would remember Iroha in her dream world she said that it she, it is her chance to beat herself the weakness her weaknesses to to improve herself which is consistent with her personality the question and then the the rest is almost the same like Yuna for example is consistent with her um she she's described to be childlike and in the dream world when she was this describing her relationship with her dream world she said that her dream um, provides her a way to recharge herself for her reality so are their personalities an extension of their dreams or is their dreams their dream world is that an extension of their personalities or their personalities um a result of their experience in their dream world. In other words, will the reality that they, they are living in be the actual reality or just a result of the dream world that they are going to live in? Right after the brand film, they released with concept film. And this, I think, happened in their real world. The center of the story is Wani. And she's scared of bugs, so she called her friends who were supposed to be there to help her. So they have their own weapons, like a net, but they all ended up being more scared of her. So it's funny, it's quirky, but it's an odd reality. But it is a reality nonetheless. So I think this specific situation is a actually happened in their real world. And it's supposed to tell us about their quirkiness as a group. Like this is why they came together. All of them are funny, all of them are quirky, but all of them are cute. The next one that they released is two concept film, and this is about Iroha dreaming. So they're slowly introducing the existence of their alternative world, which exists in their dreams, and this time it is Iroha. The dream itself is nothing out of the ordinary. It's just her dreaming, dreaming about her friends, having fun, taking pictures, and then eventually she... She wakes up, she leaves, but the picture 
of them that she took in her dreams it was actually in the box that she left that she left behind so this i think is an introduction this is when we know that there is an alternative reality uh, not an alternative reality but an alternative world that they are able to enter and it is separate from their actual reality the last one that they released is between concept film and this is the first time that we're actually seeing the black version of the five girls and when i see black i mean literal they're all in uh, black clothes and they are running towards darkness but we still know that this still them that this are still the same five girls and we know that because of the different elements that they carried from the real world into this dark world that they are entering the stars and the hearts on their faces the makeup it's still very much them but the behavior has changed you know that they're still they're a little bit tentative but also very sure tentative in that we they're not re they're not really sure what it is that they're headed to but they are sure that they want to go in that darkness what i like about it is not it is not over it was they didn't exaggerate things it's not like they are scaring us it's not like they are giving away too much they are still acting very normal it's just that the environment is changing so that is another sign and that is another reason i think it is still the same characters just transferring to another universe instead of or world instead of two different personalities coexisting cherish my love music video just like the with concept film it actually starts with one he in the with concept film she needed help because she was scared with bugs she was scared of bugs and so she called her friends to help her and then they all ended up being more scared of her in here we kind of i think we went back a little bit um earlier to an earlier period in their friendship and that she was recruited in the group by the five girls but instead but one thing that stood out is how she seems to be peculiar just like the rest of the girls that it, one sign is when she bit the paper instead of having bite marks it actually had a heart shaped hole and then they started examining her teeth and there was light coming out of it so very peculiar just like the rest of the girls that's why she fits in but one of the things that stood out is what this wisdom tooth actually symbolizes just as you know you your wisdom tooth starts bothering you when you sort of crosses towards adulthood and that's when and it's most of the time either inconvenient unpleasant or just downright painful just like wisdom tooth so adulthood is inconvenient <laughs> sometimes painful <laughs> not very pretty uh and it is very much like how you would how you would experience your wisdom tooth period in your life so i think that's what it symbolizes they're crossing over to adulthood and they're crossing over to that dream world that they are going to start living in in their succeeding releases so this is the start the start of their adulthood the start of a new world um, and I think it's it's a very fitting symbol. I've never thought about it, but I think it's a very fitting symbol. Um, even when Mocha was actually running, holding onto her wisdom tooth, I felt like that was her running and trying to protect her childhood, her innocence, because she doesn't want to let go of the the youth that they have, the purity of the world that they are living in. But they don't have a choice. I just want to give a shout out to the cinematography because it really told the story at least it was a major part in telling the entire story of the lore even if you strip down the production design i think the the lighting itself will be able to communicate the important parts of the story for boating scenes how eerie it is and how innocent the the characters actually remains so kudos to that um another thing is the lyrics it's actually it seems cute but if you actually listen to it it feels like they are hypnotizing somebody most likely the audience into going with them into this dream world that they are about to begin um the, and and it was some supplemented by the different scenes they were like they had this watch they were that was going 
left and right. Um, very much like how a hypnotizer will actually do it when they want to hypnotize somebody. So I think the, the music video complemented the lyrics very well. And all in all, if you take the entirety of this promotion, I think I, you will be able to understand what it is that they are building. And that's very consistent with, ha with how Hybe actually does things. There's always a narrative because they recognize the need to actually cross over for the need of the fans to latch on to something whenever there is no new release. And I think the narrative is what's going to carry them through. Congratulations to Islet. I'm really so excited. I want this to be as dark as possible. <laughs> I really, really love dark fantasy. Uh, and that's why they're resonating with me. So I'm excited to see what's going to happen. I'm going to be listening to the rest of the album. Uh, that's going to be my lullaby tonight. And then um, looking forward for more from them. If you have anything to add, if you have questions, clarifications, leave them in the comment section below. You can say whatever it is that you want to say for as long as you do it respectfully. Also, um, please uh, like this video, subscribe and hit that notification button and um, share the video if you can. It's really helping my channel. Also, follow me on Twitter or on X and also on Instagram and on Patreon. We do have a free membership if you're not sure and you just want to sort of feel, feel things out try it. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate you all.